Hi, my name's Megan Wells. I'm the administrator of the Public Art Program, Art in Public Places for the City of Austin. We're super excited to be showcasing this new addition to our collection. Our program has been around since 1985, and it allocates 2% of all eligible capital improvement project funding to the site-specific commission of artwork. And this is a wonderful new addition because it is a unique opportunity for us to combine the goals of the Watershed Protection Department and also the Parks Department for this uh, capital improvement project because it focuses on the issue of uh, climate change in Austin, which is a, a really pressing issue for uh, not only the folks locally, but, but beyond Austin. And I'm Terry Youngman with the Parks and Recreation Department. I am the project liaison for the Auditorium Shores Trailhead project. This project was funded through multiple funding sources. It includes a 2006 bond funding, 2012 bond funding, and a grant uh, with match funding from the city from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department for the Urban Outdoor Recreation Program. Uh, we're very happy with this installation. We think that it is very much so integrated into the landscape and is contextual with the overall construction of the project. Uh, and is functional within it as it provides education uh, for our users. And so we're very supportive of the project and very happy with the end result. I'm Andrew Green and I have been doing sculpture for the last eight years. And um, Adam Purak and uh, my background is in, in architecture. Public art is a, a completely different animal than gallery art. There's a little bit of control that you have to let go of in terms of the way that the, the work is interacted with, the way that it's viewed, how it's approached. And you even have to, to let go of, of the piece itself in a, in a sense of ownership, that, that once this, this sculpture is out on display, it, it now belongs to uh, the city. It belongs to the people that are going to be driving by or running by without uh, intending to be looking at artwork. My name is Keith Thompson with the uh, Communication Technology Management uh, Division of, of City of Austin where we uh, work with a wireless shop and we have worked with uh, watershed protection in design of this sculpture. The device behind us with the antenna mast on it is a rain gauge. If the rainfall occurs, the, there's a tip bucket inside that will record each tip at four hundredths of an inch per, per tip and that, that signal is transferred back to the sculpture and there's a computer inside of the sculpture that takes the rain information in and it works in the program to where the outside of the fins will, will adjust to the amount of rainfall and it's designed like a barrel so if it, if it hasn't rained in a while these, the fins will bow out like, it's, like it is a, an empty barrel and when there's been a, a lot of rainfall you get the, the, the barrel close up so every night at dusk that uh, the sculpture turns on, it comes alive and it, it spins for about four minutes at first while some proximity sensors count the number of turns so that it can reset itself into a neutral position. And then it collects the data, one from the rain gauge and one from the lake levels. And so anywhere from 15 to 45 seconds after it's reached the reset position, it turns the motors on to set the, the final profile that shows either a full or an empty vessel to portray the current lake conditions and the current amount of rainfall at the site. It's from the rain gauge that's right, right here on, on, on the site next to it uh, that, uh, that controls the outside rain and then remote sensors at the dams that uh, that uh, control the inside rings. Uh, and uh, we had quite a bit of support and understanding um, in the context of, of a piece that you know, brought up issues with, with safety and, and uh, longevity and maintenance, uh, probably a lot more again than a typical piece that you know, maybe you would be talking about the kind of patina uh, and that would be uh, you know, basically bulk of the of the long train maintenance as opposed to uh, about, I don't know, 200 moving parts. <laughs> Just the pedestal in itself had to do so much more than a typical pedestal. In gallery art, you're making a white box out of particle or board or something like that that just disappears and then the sculpture sits on top of it and this pedestal is jam-packed it's it's a small residential project in itself it has a roof it has to shed water it has minimum slopes in the roof uh, the waterproofing was it was a big deal because inside this pedestal we have to house all of the electrical components 
we can't say enough about the support that we got from uh, Art and Public Places panel, the Arts Commission, and then uh, specifically Watershed Protection. I mean, we worked with a, couple, a lot of different departments in the city for this project. Tell us what we gave you, the problem of like all these pieces and nowhere to put them. And then you come up with this genius idea. The suitcase. Of the blue suitcase. Yeah. Blue suitcase. I, I just didn't know. You're the blue suitcase man. And, yeah. Yeah, we were able to take the uh, the equipment that was provided and fit it into a small enclosure to make the uh, the, pro the sculpture work. My name is Carl Cannon. I'm with the wireless office of CTM in the city of Austin. And uh, Eric and I installed the standpipe you see behind us. We built the box, put everything in it. It was a lot of trial and error, but we finally managed to make it work. I mean, we intuitively knew that this could be could be done, but the the main thing for us is that we had to concentrate on the fact that for us the movement itself was as much of a component of the aesthetic part of this piece as the actual physical components. But our interest is to have a, a piece that uh, that was uh, illuminated. Uh, in a dynamic way, in a subtle way, uh, and then uh, and expressed uh, itself by the movement. Once we actually got the pieces in place, probably every other person that came by would ask us what it was that we were making and what we were doing. And so there, I think this piece is going to get a lot of interest from people that just happen upon it, wanting to know what it is. And so uh, getting that information so that people are able to interpret the piece and how it relates to uh, current climate conditions is going to be a really important part of how this uh, this piece actually begins to impact the city and, and inform people of, of where we're at in terms of uh, storage levels at the lake or how much water we're consuming and then also how much water we're bringing in which is somewhat unpredictable. And I think that working on such a tight time schedule in a three-month period we had to be okay with understanding that some of these issues are going to arise in the fabrication and we are we need to be confident that we can solve those issues during fabrication. It was actually very surprising to us how easily the thing came together. It was, it was exciting to, to see that moment where it actually, we wanted it to spin and it started to spin.